Hello and welcome to What Yacht To Do. One of the most popular videos that we have on our channel is the tour of our Carver 504. Since we put it up, we have received so many questions about different parts of our boat that we decided to put together a series. Yeah, we've received a ton of questions and so we're going to take you through this series and we're going to start with the outside of the boat and the cockpit and then go on from there. Before we get going, let me tell you a little bit about the history of the Carver 504. You also see a Carver 500 out there, and the Carver 504 specifically was those models that were produced between 1999 and 2000. Ours is a 1999. And what it is is really a cockpit version of the Carver 455 or 456 with additional fuel and so we carry 688 gallons of diesel fuel and additional water uh, 350 gallons of water. The Carver 504 maintained the light maple interior which we really enjoy because it makes for a much more airy and spacious uh, type of you know, environment. Cozy. Also the galley is aft which is good because there's great access from the bridge area down to the galley which pushes the salon a little bit further forward. There were two configurations in the Carver 504, a three stateroom and a two stateroom. Ours is the two stateroom model, although we do have a pull-out sofa bed, which we can accommodate extra guests. With the two stateroom configuration, a washer dryer, a full washer and a full dryer is in the forward VIP room. In the three stateroom version, the washer dryer is near the master stateroom area. On the Carver 504 there is tons of storage area and we will show you how we enhance some of those storage areas as well. It's easily recognizable by that enclosed, fully enclosed bridge and the wing doors that are on the uh, boat as well as it is powered by two 450 horsepower Cummins engines. So now Sam is going to walk you through around the boat in the cockpit. So let's take a trip around the outside of the Here's to Us to get an overall view of her and you will see that she has fully tinted glass all the way around the boat which makes it nice in that enclosed bridge up there from the sun beating down on you. Also on the cockpit side here, which we will take a detailed tour in this video of the cockpit area, you'll see Carver and you'll see Shady Oaks. Shady Oaks, along with Ugly John's, were two of the major places where the boats were shipped and assembled and sold. And that's important because if you do buy one of these, you'll want to know if she's a Shady Oaks or an Ugly John's boat. Additionally, the Here's to Us came with a lot of canvas, a lot of extra canvas. And you will see here on the front of her, there is canvas that you can have if you have, you know, the boat is in an area where there may be snow to keep the snow off of it, as well as on the back of the boat, there's an area there for canvas that will keep the snow out of the cockpit area from accumulating in there. And also, I guess if, you know, if it was just cold, you could put that up to keep, uh, you know, it warmer down in the master cabin. On the top of the boat, this picture here shows the original configuration when we bought the boat. It had a Ferrono radar and a satellite dome on the top. We reconfigured it because we were a little concerned about, well, first, the age of the electronics on there, and second, we wanted to get her down to a little bit closer to uh, 17 and a half feet. It was around 18 feet, and we wanted her to get her down, so we put on a Garmin radar, which we'll talk a little bit about in a different video, and we also put everything on a swivel up there. One thing that is on the boat now that's not pictured is a Glomex digital amplified TV antenna. Well, what's going on here, Sam? Yeah, that is the boat undergoing some TLC on the upper area of the boat. And what you see is it's being masked off so that we can fix some of the cracks that are in a piece of plastic that houses three windows where I can basically see when I turn around in the bridge and back up. And there was two cracks on there, so those are undergoing structural repair as well as one of the windows 
had a leak in it and so they are masking that up to redo it and they are going to re-glass that particular area up there on the top. So as we move down to the back of the boat here you will see the freedom lift and the freedom lift really is something that we love on the boat because it makes getting the dinghy out a little bit easier. The dinghy or the tender on the here's to us uh, which you'll see in a bit. This next photo shows the mechanism and it is hydraulically actuated and uh, there's electrical remote control for that particular tender. Next we are going to take a look at the sides of the boat and this really has a history of me getting to know the boat because when I got the boat the manual did not match the boat. So what I had to do was try to get a different manual from Carver. They were really great at sending me that manual and I had to identify each one of the holes that is on the boat and you will see here you see the starboard side first here's a little bit close up of those particular through holes as they call them and vents and when you get your boat you really want to make sure you know what each one of those through holes is because sometimes you'll see water coming out of something or a vent may get clogged you want to be able to clearly identify that as well as on the port side and you will see a close up there so I have these diagrams uh, handy in one of my books in case I do see something uh, I can quickly reference them another thing that is getting redone on the boat or what I call the engine cowlings or where the air basically can come in and keep those diesels running. Those were kind of pitted. They are aluminum, so those are being resanded and reprimed. Take a trip up to the front of the boat and we'll see the Maxwell uh, windlass that we have on there works really great. We have just short of 300 feet of chain on the boat, as well as a Rockna 25 kilogram and really a great anchor we is it's really never failed us take a look at the underside of the boat there what she looks like when she's pulled out of the water and you can also see the running gear the props on the here's to us are 37 pitch and a 32 inch diameter so they are big wheels uh, so to speak and she does have a bow thruster and uh, if you saw some of our videos before that bow thruster went out uh, had to be pulled out of the water and repaired as well as a stern thruster that sits underneath the swim platform so very maneuverable boat before we take you in the cockpit and show you that area of the boat i get a lot of questions as to why is it called a cockpit because a lot of people like myself airplane pilots will say the cockpit is where you drive the boat from and exactly in the early days of sailing and boating that's exactly where the boat was driven from the cockpit and when the bridge became invented well that's where you drive the boat from so the cockpit is that lower area that we're going to explore next okay so let's take a look at that cockpit and you will see that there is a set of sliding doors that allow you entrance into the master stateroom which is real great and as well as to be able to come out from the master stateroom and sit on some chairs there's really room for about three to four chairs out there we just have two chairs and we'll sit out there sometimes and it's real peaceful but what happened originally was we would get a lot of sunlight that came in there and even though there's a set of curtains on the inside I was unhappy with that wanted to block out a little bit more of the sun and also to be able to sleep in in the morning if we wanted to so I had a gentleman make me a set of canvas covers for those windows and the great thing about it is I ask him to come up with a way so that I don't have to take those canvas covers off and I can still open the doors and he was able to do that just magically the way he put them on there with fasteners that went onto the glass the cockpit also has music out there and we have uh, two speakers out in the cockpit and you will see in this next slide is that it is undergoing right now a reconditioning of the non-skid that's on there and also as well as the stairs that lead up from the cockpit into what we call the Lido deck where we do a lot of our entertaining. Those stairs are also have non-skid on them and they are getting reconditioned. To the left of the stairs is the Glen Dinning which has 60 feet of electrical cable. It is a single 50 amp service that powers just about everything on the boat and we never really run five air conditioning systems at a time will either be downstairs or will be upstairs three downstairs or three upstairs that's the major 
draw on the boat. And then you also see a master cutoff switch that is in that area as well to be able to cut power off to the boat. Also in the cockpit is a door that has access to what we call the lazarette area. In that lazarette area, there's access to both of the fuel tanks and also there are two water tanks down there as well. But here you will see controls for not only the freedom lift, but the stern thruster are in there and also freedom lift oil reservoir that is in there. So Lazarette has some storage space in it, but mostly it's access to some components that are on the boat. As we exit the cockpit through the door that is on there, to the left of that you'll see a storage box. And in that storage box there is plenty of room there for washing equipment as well as a spare anchor that we keep in the storage box. One of the features that I really liked about this boat when I saw it was the Freedom Lift because most motor yachts will have a davit system where you have to get it off the roof. I didn't want to be doing that and we really love this system. It will lift a dinghy up to 800 pounds and it is remote controlled so that you lower this and get it into the water just above the water. You board it, then you lower it all the way and you start your engine up and drive off. When you come back, you board it the same way and it brings it up. Then we get out of it and tie it down and then raise it up the entire way. So we have a 11 and a half foot inflatable hard bottom tender with a 9.9 .9 Honda 9.9 .9 Merc Cruiser electric star engine that just works like a charm and uh, we just love it. Well, thanks for coming along with us on this a very detailed explanation of the outside of our boat as well as the cockpit. Now join us next time where we will be focused on the Lido deck where we do all our entertaining. And yeah, because Rev does most of the entertaining on the boat and getting things ready. <laughs> She'll be taking you on that tour. Woohoo!